Yes, people, welcome back to my channel, Albert JTV. Um, match review time. Um, not too many notes taken for this one because obviously, like many Arsenal fans, I did say from day one, I'm not paying for the pay per view service, but yeah, so um, seen a bit of the highlights, but yeah, um, Arsenal nil, Leicester City won. Um, you know what? I'm probably glad I never paid the 1495 to be honest with you because, um, obviously, going by a lot of the reactions and watching a lot of fan cams on other people's channels and the, some of the white live watch alongs and then the you know the barrage after the game on social media on twitter and instagram um boy and from what i saw on the highlights from um match of day even though it wasn't pretty pretty long um i said this before with arsenal um actually before i go deep into it so we look at the lineup i was pretty happy with the lineup um i thought obviously with the midfield free I, you know, before the match, thought it would have given more of a license for Sabayos to be a bit more creative, to be a bit more um, to break the lines, to support the front three. Um, I've wanted Saka in the front three for a long time. I think I would prefer to see him. I think long term, his Arsenal career, I would say um, I'd like to see him on the left. Sorry, on the right hand side of the three, he can play on the left because obviously him being left footed. But definitely for going forward in his Arsenal career, I would like to see him in the front three. Or some people talk about him being in the number ten role. But I was happy with the lineup. Um, but then obviously, as we, as we saw the game start, Aubameyang was sort of on the right. Um, obviously, Laka down the middle and Saka on the left. Um, we are becoming a little bit predictable in the sense of. Um, our attacks coming down one side of the pitch, um, predominantly the left-hand side, and we're predictable. And the, from what I heard, so what I kind of saw, and from what I heard, the first half Arsenal were pretty decent enough. Some people say we was only good for the first twenty minutes. Some people say it was a decent first half performance. Um, chances again, Lacazette missing a sitter, Bamyang having a chance. To me, he should have done a bit better. Um, you know, you get the goal early, and you've got to bear in mind, Leicester had, a, had Leicester have a lot of injury um, or a lot of injuries of players. Out, I say so. They've no Ricardo Pereira for them since last season. Kalga Siongchu is out for quite a foreseeable amount of time. Um, Christian Fuchs had a left back, um, and he's not their first choice. Um, Vardy started on the bench. Because um, he missed the last three games, I believe, two league games and the cup game and the Carabao Cup, I believe it was. So the chances were to put this game, not to put to bed early, but to get to be on the front foot, um, to to get to get one nil ahead and you know upset Leicester's game plan because the game plan was obviously standing game for Leicester. Brendan Rodgers got them set up pretty well, tight, compact, um, and stay in the game for as long as possible. Um, and um, get Vardy on, hopefully to score nil-nil, and then go for the kill. And that's what panned out. Um, again, like I said earlier, I think, not earlier, but I said in previous content, for those who follow my channel, like I said, um, hit the like button, guys, subscribe to the channel, on the road to 200 subscribers, that I thought it with Emery and Arteta has been the opposite. Um, with Emery, our first half performances were awful. The second half performances were better. Um, substitutions were working. Under Arteta, and I'd go back to not just the start of this season, but back at the back end of last season um, or before the pandemic. But we would start games well and then we finish games poorly. So we was getting the best of both worlds. There was an opposite effect. Um, Arteta's obviously got us set up in a way so that defensively we were a bit more sound, but then we're obviously losing a bit. Actually, we're not losing a bit. We're losing a lot in terms of an attacking force going forward because we're not creating nothing. Um, yep, the argument's going to come up. Um, Mesut Ozil and... But I, I look beyond Mesut Ozil. I, I think even when he was part of the in the team before the lockdown and under the various different managers, there's plenty of games he played and we was he still we still wasn't creative and that was with Ozil in the team. But I'll go back to again, I think it comes back to recruitment. That's what it comes down to. 
you can bring in Thomas Party, that's fine, but you need to have the right tools around him for him to flourish in his for him to flourish in the team. And we've actually, believe it or not, I think personally, guys, you might disagree or agree, drop in the comments down below. We actually have a better we actually have we have we actually have better players, arguably, but we're playing worse. Um we have better attacking options, we're still playing worse. Um we actually have a spine of the team, contrary to what people think, Leno, Gabriel, Party now, um, and Abamyang Danim. So we have a spine of a team, probably the be probably the best spine of a team we've had for years. It's going to take time to adjust, but you, you understand what I'm saying in terms of the spine of the team, which hasn't been addressed for an endless amount of um, transfer windows of Arsenal. But the performance in the second half was was not good, man. Um, and, you know, like I said, with the midfield three, I, I would have thought it would have given Sabas a bit more licence to um, get forward, but that obviously wasn't the case. Um other than the Bellerin shot in the second half, I don't remember us creating anything. Um, and from what I also hear as well. So I think the issue you've got now is the warning signs for me were there um, with the West Ham game because we should not have won that game. West Ham should have not lost that game. We we were lucky to get the 2-1 win. The warning signs were there. Um before we came into the start of the season and people see my content, I said, if we don't address um, the midfield, the issues, the midfield, the balance of the midfield, sorry, we're not going to get top four. Um, I still don't think we'll get top four with party. People say it's an up and down league and, you know, the top four is there for the taking, but you've got to bear in mind, we finished eighth for a reason last season. Um, our worst Premier League finish for 20, was it at the time, 25 years. Um, so, Arteta's not, he's, you know, he's not the messiah. I said this before, like he's, you know, you can criticise him or, or you can look at the players, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, but again, I, like I said, to, to, to cut a long story short, the problem is when you don't do your due diligence, when you don't do the recruitment properly, this is what happens. The creativity is an issue and still is. Um, like I said, we needed Partey, Hant Hossim Awa, or, you know, a lot of people and I and I signed up for this. I don't, you know, you know, we can't always be going for, or we're not always going to get Galactico names that out there in Europe. Um, there's plenty of players out there. Yes, we could have looked a bit more in the English league. Or the people were talking about a Buendia from Norwich. People were talking about a Ben Rama from Brentford. I wouldn't have been opposed to that because it would have given us something different. Um, Lacazette again missing chances. Abamyang anonymous. Um, we look at the bench. What have we got to come on? Um, people know my thoughts about Eddie and Ketia. I think there's a lot of games he doesn't affect. There's a lot of games that pass him by. Um, Arsenal fifty was it fifty six percent possession yesterday? But what did we create? You know, I saw the game the other day of West Ham Man City. I think West Ham had thirty percent possession. Stayed in the game. Um, it gets a classic case, isn't it? It's not what you've um, it's not how much possession you have, it's what you do when you've got it. And Mikel Arteta somehow has got to get us a bit more on the front foot. I listened to Nigel Winterburn on the commentary on this one, I listened to on the radio um, yesterday on the Arsenal.com um, website, and he was saying about Arsenal just being a bit more brave, man. Um, what's the worst that can happen, you know? And I fear for Arsenal because obviously you look at our games coming up, our record at um, Old Trafford is abysmal. Um, we've got Leeds who are a very, very counter-attacking team or just a very good team in possession of the ball. You know, they don't, you know, they, they don't fear opponents as you saw when they played Liverpool in the open day of the season. We've got Villa. Villa look a, a, a completely different team from what I saw last season. Um, so the issue with Arsenal is always going to be and always has been, to be honest, that it's all right when you come up against the bigger teams and we can sit back and we can soak up pressure and hit them on the break. But when we're at home against a Leicester, against the against a West Ham, um, or playing the lesser teams away from home, how are we going to break teams down? We need to be on the front foot. We need to take more risks. We need to be a bit more brave. You've got the attacking players there. Pepe, um, 
like I said in my match preview with with my with my fellow Gooners, I said, look, yes, there's games he hasn't started, but the games we've seen him play, we need to see more. Um, and I so again, I come back to recruitment again. If you got the creative player that we needed in the middle of the park, it would have freed up Pepe more. Bellerin, people telling me he's back to his best in the first game of the season against Fulham. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions to be asked. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing the answers from Mikel Arteta and most importantly from the players, man. These players have failed under four different managers. You could go back to Wenger, interim under Freddy, Unai Emery. The same things are slowly starting to happen with Mikel Arteta. And when you look at Emery's time at Arsenal and Mikel Arteta and if, with his entirety of his time at Arsenal, other than an enthusiasm for Arteta, which is rightly so, there's not much difference in between with the football. It's not great to watch. And, you know, shout out to the Arsenal fans that did not pay for the pay-per-view service. They weren't going to pay for that. No chance. Um, it didn't help for the fact that... So what? It didn't help for the fact, sorry, that um, <laughs> the, the performance wasn't gay and we lost. Leicester haven't beaten Arsenal away since 1973. 27 consecutive games before yesterday. That tells you what you need to know. So yeah, they sucker punched us, man. Tactical masterclass from Brendan Rodgers. Call it whatever you want, call it whatever you want to call it. And again, James Vardy scores. Look at the goal conceded from a defensive point of view. Where was Mustafi? Where was the awareness of Mustafi? Where was the awareness of Xhaka? Um, look at the amount of space Vardy had. With what? Within 10 minutes to go and you're leaving a man three who scored now 11 in 12 goals against you madness and even then i think the goal completely knocked the stuffing out of us to be honest um we didn't create anything and leicester win their first game at, at arsenal since 1973 wow um we got some tough games coming up are you guys confident about the game against united because i'm not and that's purely based on our record there and united haven't won a home game this season yet Look what could potentially happen next week. So, guys, there's my thoughts. Um, a bit sort of off the cuff because I obviously didn't watch the game. But, yeah, guys, drop your comments down below. Tell me who you thought your best Arsenal player was. Again, standout for me again was Gabriel did well again. Saka again. You know, we've got our two youngest talents at the club performing week in, week out. What's happened to the rest of them? Where's the consistency? Mikel Arteta, you've got some work to do, my friend. Um, so, guys, drop in the comments down below. Tell me your thoughts. Best Arsenal player. Um, your thoughts generally about the game, if there's any good thoughts at all, which I don't think there is. Um, we've got May United next week. Um, I'll do a preview for that, probably. Um, thank God that game's not on pay-per-view. Um, so, guys, you know the usual. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Hit the notification button for my content comes out. That is me, Albert JTV, over and out. Hashtag. Arsenal nil, Leicester one. A lot of work to do.